You know, Christmas really does mean different things to different people. I do think it's important as a church not to lose, at least in our environment and at least in our homes, that we not lose that Christmas is about Christ. Even when we try to bring that into our homes, I thought it was funny. I read a little article this past week where this man was writing. He says, you know, we try to bring Christmas into, uh, I mean, Jesus' birthday into Christmas in our home. And says, I don't know that we've completely arrived and that my son gets it yet. He's about six years, six, seven years old. And this year we made Jesus a birthday cake. And as we were sitting around the table, and I said, well, we were singing happy birthday to Jesus. And they're, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Jesus, happy birthday to you. He goes, my heart was full of joy. And my little boy said, and many more. <laughs> but at least we're trying, right? At least we're trying. Today I want to bring a message that's entitled, what gift are you giving to Jesus this year? What is your gift to Jesus this year? If it's truly his birthday, and you said amen that you believe that it is, but if it's truly his birthday, what are you going to give to Jesus this year at Christmas? What are you going to put underneath the tree? I want to talk to you a little bit different in the story of Christmas this year, and I want to talk in Matthew chapter 1, begin reading in verse 18 if you have your Bibles. I want to talk to you about a man that was really put in an odd place, put in a different position. And maybe your expectation of a Christmas message would have been a little different than this today. We'll come back next Sunday. We'll have two Sundays that we give to this. But today I want to talk to you about a man that in our society would be known, or if you would, he, he raised him. As we all know, we'll, we'll read in the scriptures in a moment, that while Joseph obviously was not a biological father that Mary received as a virgin, conceived through the Holy Spirit, the Messiah, we understand that, but Joseph was to play the role of father to the Messiah. And what a phenomenal task that must have been. I know that all of us that are dads and all of us that are moms can think about us raising our own children and we can reflect, especially if you've lived as long as Dee and I have and maybe older. If you're in that process right now, you may not can relate to this, but we can look back and we see things that we did in raising our children that we're very proud of. And then we can reflect back on some things that maybe we think, well, I'm not so proud of that. And, and maybe there's some things we can say, if we had it to do over, we might would do these things different. But you know that it's true. It's easy to do that because we all raised heathens. Can I get an amen? amen? We raised heathens. But can you imagine the responsibility, the awesomeness, of being told that you will be the father. You will be the example in raising the Messiah. I hope we can go there for just a few moments and we look at that and, and decide before we leave, what will you give for Christmas this year? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the music we just heard. Father, thank you for the spirit. Father, we ask you to bless those that, uh, Father, need a special prayer today in just a special place. Father, we are not slack in understanding what this season is about, but Father, may we embrace it. And all of the church said amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. I want to begin reading, actually, in verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. 
But while he thought upon these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. In church, say amen. amen. Verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Church, say amen. amen. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Church, say amen. Amen. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife, Mary. And he did not know her until, he had brought, until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. Church, say amen. amen. Joseph, I want to give you some things here as in giving to Christmas. What will you give to Jesus let me share something with you that Joseph was a man just like you and I. And I'm, I'm going to use the term man and I'm going to continue to use the name father, understanding what I mean by that. If you, if you understand, say amen. And so I, I'm going to use those terms because they're just, they're simple terms and they're easier for us to understand and relate to when I say that Jesus, I mean that Joseph was a, a father to Jesus. But the Bible says in verse uh, 18, it says that Joseph, uh, or actually 19, was a just man. Say the word just. I hope that you and I, as we give to Christmas this year, I hope that one of the things that we will put under the tree uh, is a little package with a note in it and says, Lord, this year may I be more of a just man. May I be more of a just man woman. May I be more of a just individual. Lord, I want to be looked at as being just. Well, what does it mean? It, we, it means the word just means living in conformity. Say conformity. Living in conformity to what is morally right. Living in conformity to what's just the right thing to do. I always, when I hear the word conform, I often think about me and sometimes in my very valued naps, say amen. I used to be afraid of naps. Now I embrace them as I get older. And I can remember sometimes if I were to lie on some of the, maybe the, the floor that we had, if it was a particular carpet back in the day, for sure, we'll date myself, when you had shag carpet. Can you say amen to shag carpet? You had shag carpet. Now it's that little short carpet, but it's got designs in it. And if you lay down to take a nap and you put your head on that carpet and you sleep for more than 30 to 40 minutes, when you wake up, what do you have on the side of your face? You have the design of whatever you laid your head on. And you have nap face for a little while. I want you to know something that you and I in giving to Christmas this year, what are you going to give to Jesus? You and I need to give some conformity to being like the child Jesus Christ. Just. Are you just in your dealings? Are you just in your giving? Are you just in, in, in your relationships to other people. Joseph was found as a just man. Not only that, look at verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. And it says in the next verse, and while he thought on these things. I'm going to give you some real brief history right here. You need to understand that the Virgin Mary was somewhere, according to history, between the age of 12 and 14 years old. And she was betrothed, if you would, to Joseph. Now, for simple language for you and I, that means that they were engaged to be married. And that history, betrothed, was a little bit more serious than I think what engagements are looked at today. And that when they were betrothed, when they were set aside, it was designated, they were betrothed to be together. It would have been as serious today as a marriage commitment. In fact, in order, according to uh, that, that history of that culture of that day, in order to no longer be engaged or to no longer be in troth, it actually would have taken a divorce like you and I know divorce today. 
So their commitment level was very serious. Now, I want you to know something. I don't think that it was this easy. I don't believe that Mary uh, had the, and we won't get too far into that, what we'll talk about next week. But the Spirit didn't come to Mary and say, Mary, uh, blessed are thou among women, and you're going to conceive of a child. And then her say, well, all right. And just casually go to Joseph, who she was engaged to, is what we'll call it. And he just casually go to Joseph and say, by the way, I want you to know something. He says, well, what's that? I think he thought she was going to say something like, I spent $99 at Michael's this today or something. <laughs> I don't think ever in Joseph's mind did he think Mary was going to look at me and go, well, I'm with child. And just smile about it. I'm going to have a baby. Why? Because Mary was a virgin. And I want to help you with this. And this is why I want you to understand what kind of man Joseph was. I believe momentarily, according to Scripture, now some of you are going to raise your left eyebrow on this, and it's going to offend you a little bit because you've always heard this different picture. But momentarily, when Mary told Joseph that she was with child, as a man in his flesh, he thought she had cheated on him. Do you understand that? He thought she had cheated. Now I want to help you with this. In that day, Joseph would have been in his legal right to take Mary, bring her to the, what you would call the center of the court of the town, have the men of the city all bring stones and stone Mary to death within his legal right. It was the law. Joseph was a man that was just, say just. And the Bible says that then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example. Now listen, that's what that means. He did not want to take Mary to the center of the town and make an example out of her and have her stoned to death. But he says this in, in, in this scripture, stay with me, verse 19 but was minded to put her away secretly. And I don't really think that it was as much shame on her as much shame on him. He didn't want the community to have to go through that. He didn't want the church, if you would, to have to go through that. He didn't want her family to have to go through that. He didn't want his family to have to go through that. But he didn't know what he was going to do. But I want you to understand that what Joseph gave Christmas this season in this scripture of who he was because then the Bible says but while he thought on these things Joseph was very confused I want you to know something for for, for Mary to come to, to Joseph and say well Joseph I'm with a child and he says well whose is it and she says well it's no man's it's God's I've conceived of the Holy Spirit and still maintain a virgin Help me, guys. I'm not making light of it. I'm telling you, I don't think Joseph went, whoo, bless Jesus, glory to God. He didn't. In fact, he was so hurt in his heart. He was so wounded in his heart. He was so wounded in his mind. The Bible says he had to go away and just think about what he was going to do. And I want to tell you, those thoughts were so bad. Those thoughts were so bad in Joseph's life that the Bible says the Holy Spirit had to intervene. Say amen. amen. That the Holy Spirit intervened because verse 20 says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And, and we read all of those scriptures. So not only was Joseph a just man, but Joseph was a thoughtful man. Joseph cared about something, and hear me out, I think this is one thing we've got to do in Christmas. Joseph thought about something that was bigger than himself, say church, amen. He thought of something bigger than himself. He thought of something besides himself. Not only was he a just man, is he a thoughtful man, but this is something else that I believe that we need to give at Christmas this year, is Joseph surrendered his fears. Joseph surrendered his fears. It had to be a scary thing. It had to be a scary thing. I want to put kind of surrendered his fears, and then I want to talk about this too, and committed to something. He surrendered his fears and committed to something. Maybe you need to get a little box this year. 
Maybe you and your husband and you and your children need to pray about it. Maybe just you need to do it. And I think you need to take a piece of paper and I think you need to write more commitment. And you need to put that in that box and you need to wrap it and you need to give that to Jesus under the tree this year. What are you going to put under the tree for Jesus this year? May it be more than a cake that we sing happy birthday to. May it be something that he gave his life for you and I so that we may have opportunity and in return we give our lives back to him. But he surrendered his fears. I believe that Joseph went and I believe he had to pray. We need to maybe give Jesus this year a little more of our prayer time, a little more of our prayer life. Maybe it's this, and I heard this the other day and I like it. If probably 99% of our prayers this year was us doing all the talking and the asking, maybe we need to pray and just listen for a little bit. What are you going to give under the tree this year to Jesus? He committed to not caring what his friends thought. He committed to not caring what his work people thought. He committed to not caring even what his parents or his grandparents thought. You know, I can just see old Joseph as the word got out, especially if this would have happened in, in Liberty County or Hardin County. And I could name a few more. But don't you know old Joseph going to the barber shop on Friday? couple of his friends saw him and they just kind of looked at him and kind of smirked as he walked by one of them punched the other and says there's that old boy that's uh Mary and Mary uh she's pregnant but she's never been with anybody <laughs> you get it what did Joseph give let me tell you this he committed to believing in the supernatural versus the natural. He believed in committing to something that was bigger than himself. He believed because God and the angels came and he spoke to his heart. He says, I'm going to commit to what God tells me to do versus what man is going to put pressure on me to do. Amen. What will you give to Jesus this year? Not only did he do that, but he did exactly as commanded, look at verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken through the Lord, through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear her son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which was translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep. Now, I know what would have happened to me at that point. I would have think I had eaten dinner too late that night. Or I would be going back to the Lord and I'd say, Lord, are you sure about this? He never doubted. What are you going to put under the tree for Christmas this year to Jesus? Maybe it's faith. Maybe it's your faith. Maybe it's your confidence. Maybe it's your trust. What are we going to put under the tree for Jesus this year? I want you to know something. Of all the miracles that took place that we can study in the Word of God, the greatest miracle even of Jesus being born of a virgin. The greatest miracle is that the Messiah was born of a virgin. The Messiah lived here for 33 years, died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And the Bible says that his blood can save me from my sins. Maybe for, Jesus, maybe for Christmas this year, maybe you need to give Jesus your heart. Maybe you need to give Jesus your life. Maybe you need to make that commitment to follow Jesus in a fresh, fresh way. What is your gift? I challenge you this morning with these things. What is your gift this year? Maybe it's a little more understanding. Maybe this year you need to be more of an understanding person with your wife. More of an understanding person with your friends. More of an understanding person around the people that you work around. Don't you know that as Mary was trying to explain all of this to Joseph, don't you know that was tough for her too? If there ever was a time, 
if there ever was a time that, that Mary needed Joseph to be understanding, it was that day. Maybe you need to be more understanding. Let me give you this one. Maybe you need to be a little more thoughtful. I know it's quiet in here today, but church, say amen. Maybe you need to be more thoughtful. Maybe you need to be more thoughtful to others. Maybe you need to be more thoughtful to your husband, thoughtful to your wife, thoughtful to your children, thoughtful to your parents. Will you give that for Christmas this year? Will you give that for Christmas this year? We will spend so much money and so much time and so much effort on giving to each other for Christmas. But I ask you, what are you giving to Jesus? It's his birthday. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. What are you going to give to him? I like this one. This one probably will make Denise smile a little bit. Maybe this year you need to put under the tree the little package and says, I promise not to overreact too much. Oh, so many times we can be so quick to overreact to things. Overreact. Are you seeing now the things? Because listen, the very first Christmas season was when Joseph and Mary were in that barn giving birth to our Messiah giving birth to our Savior. What did Joseph give for Christmas that year? He sure gave a spirit of not overreacting. We've already talked about this, but Joseph just did the right thing. It's so easy to not do the right thing. You and I this year in, in our dealings and what we have to to offer each other, to offer this church, to offer the world, to offer the community that we live in, we need to understand there's an obligation. We talk about this on Wednesday nights and walking the line. We have an obligation to live just. We have an obligation as a Christian to do the right thing. Then maybe we need to put under there just a new fresh commitment. Lord, I put a new fresh commitment to you today. Lord, I recommit my life. We used to call it rededicating. Lord, this year I rededicate my life to you. A fresh and a new. Maybe it's to pray more. Maybe it's to be in the Word more. I don't know what it is, but you know. Will you take a moment and just bow your head and pray? And simply say, Lord, this year the gift that I know I need to give you, put under the tree, is this. And you finish that sentence. Lord, the gift that I need to put under the tree this year for you is this. And you finish that sentence. Because all of us will have something different to say to him. Lord, I commit to, to more prayer. Lord, I commit to more of your word. Lord, I commit to a more committed church attendance. Lord, I commit to giving. Lord, I commit to and just and finish that. Lord, I, I, I commit to being a better husband. I commit to being a better father. I commit to being a better wife, a better child. I don't know what it is, but you do. And he speaks to your heart today. What will you give Jesus for Christmas? Those of you that are watching us on YouTube, I challenge you. I challenge you in your hearts to go and find those that, that just need an arm put around their shoulder just a positive word but to challenge yourself and ask yourself this Christmas season what will you give Jesus the thing that he wants the most is our heart and lives I was at my mom's the other day and this past week and Dee and I had thought, well, what will we get my mom, 83 years old, what will we get her for Christmas? And so I asked her when we left, I said, Mom, what, what can I get you for Christmas this year? Without hesitation, she says, oh, I know, I know. And I kind of looked and I said, well, okay, what is it? She says, I want you to bring your guitar.
And I want you to sink to your bottom for just one hour. It would have been a lot easier to go to Walmart. <laughs> but when I left, I saw that and I said, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus would just like to have a little bit of your time just to hear from you. And with that, Dee and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. But challenge your heart with what will you give to Jesus this year. And the church said, Amen.